Hello everyone and welcome to the Teo community of Interfaith Franciscans. We welcome you today to our Vesper Prayer. Our Vesper Prayer for Thursday, the 14th of July. We have our candle that's lit for peace and we want you to, we would like for you to set your intentions right now as to what you would like to pray for and would like all of us to pray for. So just quietly set them, those intentions in your hearts right now. Today is the feast of St. Kateri Tikagwitha. She was of the Mohawk tribe and um, she died at a very young age. Uh, she had survived smallpox. Her parents were killed by the smallpox because they were brought here uh, to the by the Europeans to the Native American tribes and they had no defense for smallpox. They never had experienced that before. So she was baptized by uh, Jesuit missionaries that happened to come through the area. She was from an area up in um, northern New York State. Uh, today it would be known near the St. Lawrence River which is not that far from Canada. So we ask her to pray for us as well today. And our prayer for peace is, In the name of God, the compassionate and the merciful, look with compassion upon the whole human family. Take away the controversial interpretations of arrogance, divisions, and hatreds which have badly infected our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Reunite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth that in your good time all nations and races could jointly serve you in justice, peace, and harmony. Amen. So we now ask God to come and assist us to pray and we also ask for um, the dear Saint uh, Kateri Tegagwitha to pray for us today as well. O God, come to our assistance. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to our Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus, who is our teacher, and to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Now we have our poem for the day, which is, I bind unto myself the name, the strong name of the Trinity, by invocation of the same, the three in one and the one in three, of whom all nature hath creation. Eternal Father, Spirit, Word, praise to the Lord my salvation, salvation of Christ the Lord. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before, before me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me and above me, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. And that was actually taken after the um, prayer of St. Patrick. And it was written by, um, I don't know if I'm saying this correctly, Breege O'Hare. The psalm today is Psalm 132 that we're going to start our Vesper prayer with. And it's God's promises to the house of David and most certainly to all of us. The antiphon is, Let your holy people rejoice, O Lord, as they enter your dwelling place. O Lord, remember David and all the many hardships he endured, the oath he swore to the Lord, his vow to the strong one of Jacob. I will not enter the house where I live, he said, nor go to the bed where I rest. I will give no sleep to my eyes, and to my eyelids I will give no slumber, till I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling for the strong one of Jacob. At Ephrata we heard of the ark. We found it in the plains of Urim. Let us go to the place of his dwelling. Let us go to kneel at his footstool. Go up, Lord, to the place of your rest, you and the ark of your strength. Your priests shall be clothed with holiness. Your faithful shall ring out their joy. For the sake of David, your servant, do not reject your anointed ones. Glory to our Father, Mother God to the Lord Jesus, who is our teacher, and to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, 
world without end. Amen. Let your people rejoice, O Lord, as they enter your dwelling place. And now we go on with the same psalm. But now our antiphon changes to, The Lord has chosen Zion as his sanctuary. The Lord swore an oath to David, and he will not go back on his word. A son, the fruit of your body, will I set upon your throne. If they keep my covenant and truth and my laws that I have taught them, their sons also shall rule on your throne from age to age. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his dwelling. This is my resting place forever. Here have I chosen to live. I will greatly bless her produce. I will fill her poor with bread. I will clothe her priests with salvation, and her faithful shall ring out their joy. There David's stock will flower, and I will prepare a lamp for my anointed. I will cover his enemies with shame, but on him my crown shall shine. Glory to our Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus, who is our teacher, and to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, you chose to suffer and be overwhelmed by death in order to open the gates of death in triumph. Stay with us on our pilgrimage here. Free us from all evil by the power of your resurrection. In the company of your saints and constantly remembering your love for us, we sing of your wonders in our Father Mother's house. And again we say the antiphon, The Lord has chosen Zion as his sanctuary. Now we pray the antiphon, The Father has given Christ all power, honor, and kingship, all people will obey him. And this is in response to the canticle from Revelation that speaks of God's judgment. We praise you, Lord God Almighty, who is and who was. You have assumed your great power and you have begun your reign. The nations have raged in anger, but then came your day of wrath and the moment to judge those who are dead. The time to reward your servants, the prophets, and the holy ones who revere you the great and the small alike. Now have salvation and power come, the reign of our God and the authority of his anointed one. For the accuser of our brothers is cast out, who night and day accuse them before God. They defeated him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Love for life did not deter them from death. So rejoice, you heavens, and you that dwell therein. Glory to our Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus, who is our teacher, and to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So the antiphon again is, the, the Father has given Christ all power, honor, and kingship, and all people will obey him. And now we have a reading from Corinthians, and this certainly deals with um, St. Kateri Tegaguitha's life. She remained unmarried, and um, she never, because mainly, I, she, she was unmarried also because she survived smallpox, which had disfigured her face. So she instead put her sights on the things of God. Not saying that if you were beautiful, you couldn't do it also. You couldn't set your sights on things of God, but at any rate, for her time, this is what had happened. So the unmarried man, from 1 Corinthians, we have this reading. The unmarried man is busy with the Lord's affairs, concerned with pleasing the Lord. The virgin, indeed any unmarried woman, is concerned with things of the Lord, in pursuit of holiness in body and spirit. Our response is, the virgins are led into the presence of the king amid gladness and joy. The virgins are led into the presence of the king amidst gladness and joy. And they are brought into the king's dwelling place amidst gladness and joy. Glory to our Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus, who is our teacher, and to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. 
the virgins are led into the presence of the king amidst gladness and joy. Now we continue to pray, but this time we pray the Canticle of Mary and we honor Kateri in the Antiphon and throughout the Canticle today. And all those who are unmarried, and all of those are sincerely, devo sincerely devoted to God. Come, spouse of Christ, receive the crown that the Lord has prepared for you from all eternity is the antiphon. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed, for the Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those of us who revere him in every generation, and he has shown the strength of his arm, and scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly ones. He fills the hungry with good things, and the rich he sends away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promises he made to our fathers and our mothers, to Abraham and his children forever. So we say, Glory to our Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus, our Teacher, and to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And the antiphon in honor of Kateri is, Come, Spouse of Christ, receive the crown the Lord has prepared for you from all eternity. So now let us pray for each other and honor our Father, Mother, God and praise our Father, Mother, God for our blessing. And our response is, Jesus, hear us. Christ, you presented yourself as a chaste virgin. You presented yourself to us and had us as a chaste virgin to you, her sp our spouse. Keep us holy and inviolate, and we pray. God, our Father, Mother, hear us. Christ, the holy virgins, went out to meet you with their lamps alight. Keep the fidelity of all those consecrated to you burning brightly. And we pray. Father, Mother, God, hear us. Lord, you have always kept the faith whole and untarnished. Keep the faith whole and untarnished in all faith traditions. Grant all of us a whole and untarnished faith and truth in our hearts, and we pray, God, our Father and Mother, hear us. You have admitted the Holy Virgins to your marriage banquet. In your mercy, lead the dead to your heavenly feast, and we pray, Father, Mother, God, hear us. We pray for all those in the Teo community that we may all be faithful to the calling that we have vowed. And let us pray, Father, Mother, God, hear us. We pray for you, Brother Sean, Brother Rob, Brother Paul, and Brother Murray, and all of those at the Monastery at Storth, and especially for the upcoming feast that you're going to be having and the beautiful presentation for the feast of uh, Mary Magdalene. And we pray, God, our Father, Mother, hear us. We pray for all of you that are not logged in, and all who might watch this program in the future, that God will really richly bless you. And we pray that he will always keep you in his merciful heart. And we pray, Father, Mother, God, hear us. We pray for you, Sister Sue, and your family, and ask for God's blessing. And we pray, O oh God, our Father, Mother, hear us. We pray for our earth, that she may be balanced and filled with your love and your peace. We pray, God, our Father and Mother, hear us. We pray for all of the petitions that are coming on the chat board, that all these petitions will be hidden in your heart, dear Lord, and covered with your love. And we pray, Jesus, Father, Mother, God, hear us. And now, let us offer to God the silence that is in our hearts right now as a prayer. And we pray.
Father, Mother, God, hear us. Now, as one family, I would ask you to hold on to your brother and sister's hand through cyberspace, and let's pray the Our Father, Mother, God together. So let us begin. Our Father, Mother, God, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, and yours is the glory, now and forever. Amen. Our concluding prayer is, O God, who desired the Virgin St. Kateri Tekakwitha to flower among Native Americans in a life of innocence, grant that through her intercession that all of us gathered here from every nation, tribe, and tongue may magnify you in a single canticle of praise. And we ask this through our Lord, the Cosmic Christ, who is your Son and our brother and teacher, and who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord richly bless all of us, and especially the Native American people. Protect all of us from every evil, and bring us to the fullness of life. Amen. Our final blessing is this. Blessing upon your home, a blessing upon your hearth, a blessing upon your dwelling, and upon your warming fire, a blessing upon your animals and land, a blessing upon your kith and kin, a blessing upon you in dark or in light, each day and night of your living. Amen. So thank you for being here with us today and for praying. It's such a wonderful thing for us to pray together. So hopefully I will see you again. In the meantime, namaste.